Hi, my name is Scott Berger, and I'm with Kane County's Office of Community Reinvestment. This video has been prepared with the help of Batavia's Community Access TV station, BATV, to assist you in applying for funding from Kane County. Every year, the Kane County Board allocates a portion of the revenue it receives from the Grand Victoria Riverboat for projects that address critical issues and help to strengthen Kane County communities. In this video, we'll provide you with an overview of Kane County's Riverboat Fund and explain the application process for the year ahead. The Riverboat Fund was established in 1997 under an agreement between Kane County and the Elgin Riverboat Resort. Funding that comes to the county is ultimately provided by the Riverboat's philanthropic arm, the Grand Victoria Foundation. The agreement provides for an annual contribution to Kane County equal to 7.5% of the Grand Victoria Riverboat's net operating income, which varies from year to year. Each year, the County Board makes a portion of its riverboat funds available for projects and programs sponsored by external agencies and community-based organizations. For 2013, the County Board has allocated $500,000 for such projects, with a maximum cap of $100,000 for any single project. And finally, projects must be completed within two years of being funded, so you'll want to make sure not to submit your project proposal before it's ready to proceed. The overall goal of the Riverboat Fund is to help finance projects and programs that address needs in the following areas, education, economic development, and the environment. And ideally, projects should not only focus on solving current problems, but providing long-term solutions. Now, within these three broad categories, there are certain types of projects the county is looking for. For example, projects should address capital needs rather than ongoing operating expenses. Projects that leverage funding from other sources are preferred, as are projects that involve collaboration with other entities. Finally, projects should be financially sustainable and be able to demonstrate evidence of continued support going forward. So with those basics in mind, we want to talk about the application process for the year ahead. To start, I've asked my colleague, Jenny Groby, to walk you th through how to apply for funding. Jen? To apply for riverboat funds, you will need to complete our standard application form and attach several documents specific to your project and organization. Our application is available as a fillable Adobe form you can download from the internet from our community reinvestment page on the county's website. Please let us know if you have any difficulty with this. We're happy to provide the application to you on a flash drive. The first section asks for some general information about your organization, including contact information and your federal employer ID number. In the next, se in the next section, we're looking for you to provide some information about your project, including the category it qualifies under, the population and geographic area that will benefit from it, and, of course, the amount of riverboat funding you are requesting. We also ask for a brief description of the project, the number of jobs it will either create or maintain, and your timeline for completing the project. Keep in mind that funding decisions are the outcome of your application. Remember, projects must be completed within two years of being funded, and those funding decisions will likely be made next spring. Next, we have a series of yes or no questions that deal with past funding awards your organization may have received from Kane County, and whether your project might involve any of the activities specifically prohibited under the Riverboat program. As we already mentioned, there are several documents that should be submitted with the application form. We ask that you provide a one-page executive summary describing your project and a budget identifying your funding sources for the project and whether or not they are committed or pending. We've provided a form in the application packet for this purpose. Next, your project costs should be supported by cost quotations from contractors and service or material providers. We also ask that you provide copies of certifications or licenses that may apply to any personnel that might be required to complete your project. This might include your own staff or contractors you intend to hire to work on the project. We also require evidence that your application has been properly authorized, so we ask that you attach a board resolution to that effect and have provided a sample res and we have provided a sample re resolution on our website. If your organization is a nonprofit, you will need to provide some additional documents. 
These primarily focus on your tax status as a 501c3 and financial matters. Of course, you are welcome to attach additional items you feel help to explain your project, but they are not required. Finally, we ask you to review and sign an applicant certification statement. Among other things, this is your promise that all of the information included in with your application is true and that you will let us know of any changes that might occur after you submit your application for consideration. Thank you, Jen. Of course, once you've completed your application, you'll want to be sure to submit it by the deadline. This year, the deadline is 4.30 p.m., Monday, January 7, 2013. All applications should be submitted to our office, the Office of Community Reinvestment, at the Kane County Government Center, or submitted electronically by scanning it and submitting it on a flash drive, or by sending a scanned copy by email to ocr at countyofkane.org. The email option is what we prefer, but the other two options are perfectly acceptable. Following the deadline, all applications go to the County Board's Riverboat Committee which is responsible for reviewing each proposal and recommending funding allocations for specific projects. Their recommendations go to the full county board for review and final approval. Applicants that are approved for riverboat funding will be expected to enter into a written agreement with the county. The agreement outlines the terms and conditions under which funding will be provided for your project. It details the reporting and record keeping requirements with which you'll be expected to comply and covers the county's payment process, which involves issuing reimbursements for eligible project expenses. So with that overview, we want to invite you to visit Kane County's website to learn more about the Riverboat Fund and to obtain program guidelines and the application materials you'll need to submit a proposal of your own. As you do so, keep in mind that our office is happy to assist and answer any questions you might have. Feel free to email us and either Jenny or I will respond as soon as possible. Finally, we appreciate you taking the time to view this video produced with generous assistance from the folks at BATV. We hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, we're happy to hear them. Please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you and have a good day.